So some may remember when we did a kitchen build, link in description, we have a playlist there that you can watch the kitchen build on. Um, we built this counter ourselves. So we refurbished some wood that we found and built it ourselves, and we think it looks really nice. Now, for the cottage, we've been looking at furniture and it's all just like flat packed IKEA stuff. And there's just nothing we like. And anything we do like is just like a crazy price, like an antique or and so we just thought, let's just build some of our own stuff again. So we're gonna we're gonna get some wood and do reclaim a reclaim wood counter in the bathroom, and we're gonna do uh, we think a dining table and a coffee table too. So we're gonna go and take a look at the wood now and see if it's gonna be usable to reclaim. This has come out fine. All we had to do was sand this down and lacquer it, and it's quite beautiful. So we hope to do the same for the cottage. So this is the first piece of wood that we think we can use for the dining table. It looks a bit of a mess now, but once it's cleaned up and lacquered and we make like a, a steel frame uh, legs, it will be quite a beautiful piece. Secondly, we love this old tree here. It's got a lot of character. We're thinking we may be able to clean this up too and find a nice location in the, perhaps the bathroom for it. We also discovered this twisting, turning tree. You can see it's beautiful twists in it, beautiful uh, structure. So we think we might find a location for this one too. So let's talk about termites in the ward. And this kitchen now, I think it's just over a year. Um, we are getting termite dust, see? So that means there's termites in this ward and it's slowly eating it away. And I suspect still it's gonna last about three or four years. But when the time comes, we're actually gonna to have to get a, you see the steel here? We'll get a concrete column put in here into the ground and, and under that steel there to, to hold it up. So we'll get one on this side and we'll get one on that side and we may get one in the middle. Now, to be fair though, I haven't treated this wood. So before I was treating it every six months with this. This is wood preservative. Um, and it, it's to stop termites getting in. It's anti-termite. So actually, once they're in, it's difficult to get rid of them because they hang out in the middle. But, um, but you can dissuade them. So if you put lots of this stuff on, generally they'll go away for a couple months, but then they end up coming back. Although the wood that we've used at the front here is actually much older than the wood that we use for the kitchen. And it's, it's been around for a lot longer, it hasn't got termites, it's, it's more resistant to termites, and we'll be treating it with this heavily before they paint it. So I think we're going to have better luck with these. Uh, maybe we'll get 10 years out of them, but eventually they may need to be replaced or a new concrete column be put in. My brother's just showing us how um, this light's going to look here. Going in, so these are the ones we've gone for, warm light. Um, just like we have in the kitchen actually, the kitchen ones are a bit smaller. These ones are a bit bigger because they're going high up. We could have got bigger ones, but we have so many lights in there that we think it's going to be fine, you know. We don't want to live in an aquarium where it's all lit up and especially we don't like those daylight lights. We like, uh, we like the warm light. So we've got loads of those. And I'll tell you what though guys, the jobs are mounting up, really mounting up. It's just like as soon as one thing's finished, there's another thing to do. Here what they're doing at the moment is building the shelves, the bookshelves go under the stairs. So we're having three shelves there. Um, just to put some books and some storage. Also in this bathroom here, we're going to be building our own counter from the wood. So that's going to be a big job. It's going to be 170 centimeters this way. 80 high and 60 wide. Um, they've started painting the woods and the windows just up there, you can see behind me. So we're quite happy with that colour, a little bit dark, uh, darker wood colour. Quite happy with that. And uh, yeah, cracking on guys, cracking on.
So as you just saw, we're cladding the wood on top of the metal there. Uh, it gets a bit pricey because the, the wood's not cheap, um, but they will paint that wood the same brown as that we've used throughout. The windows that are coming are actually white, but because we're adding shutters and there's going to be a couple of benches under the front, you'll hardly even notice. We would have gone for brown, but the brown windows were probably about 30 to 40 percent more expensive, maybe even a little bit more. So we went for the white windows as a cost saver. They will be kind of square cottage windows, but um, we'll, ha we'll add the shutters so, so you kind of frame the windows in that kind of cottage style. So um, the balcony as well, he's, he's just painting that brown. It won't really matter what color it is because there's gonna be some plants up there and we're planning to have some uh, hanging plants, the ones that grow down and hang down the balcony there. So um, we're not too bothered about the, the undercoat of the, the rail. Uh, it'll be covered with plants. There'll be a bench up there where you can sit. Underneath the balcony, put this effect. Uh, I think it looks like a nice finish, especially around the sides. And the columns here, the white columns, we're actually going to tile them. So this is a beautiful tree trunk that we found that uh, we want to recondition. It's got a beautiful twist in the middle, see. So we're just going to uh, sand it and lacquer it. And then actually it's going to go inside here in the corner at the bottom of the stairs there. So I think it's just been and going to be a nice feature in the room. We're going to use reclaimed wood for our coffee table um, and a dining table that we're going to put in here. So there's going to be lots of reclaimed wood in here. Also, they finished the shelves here under the stairs. I think these look great. Very strong and sturdy. Just for some books, decorations up there. I think it's going to look very nice. Also for the worktop, for the bathroom, we'll use reclaimed wood on top of here in two levels. Our plan is to use a vinyl flooring up here. So that's come already. It's just got a adhesive side that will stick to here after it's all been cleaned. You can see we've now added the wood, the wood clad to the steel. I think it looks very nice. That's been lacquered. It's been lacquered two times, but I think we'll do it another two or three times maybe, just to take it a couple of shades darker. And then also here on the top of the stairs. Now for the balcony, I can't walk out there because uh, this is a TOA waterproofing of the concrete board. So the concrete board has been waterproofed with a special TOA paint. And then on top of this will go the tiling. Rosie has fast become one of my favorite dogs. She sleeps by my bamboo. She's very loving and soft and sweet, but she's also a very good guard dog. Anybody that comes in, she barks. Anybody that walks past, she barks, uh, but then she doesn't bark otherwise. So she doesn't necessarily disturb us. Come here, girl, there she is, aren't you? 
There you are. What a good girl you are, aren't you? You beautiful girl. Beautiful girl you are, aren't you? You beautiful. Yeah, you are. She does, however, have a naughty brother who tries to chase the chickens and eat the chickens. Is always in getting in trouble. Like damaged our plants. Just always up to no good. You know what I mean? So we've had to shoo him off to the other farm. Um, just too much trouble here for our other animals and chickens and we can't have all the, all the dogs hanging around here. We're quite selective. Ones that get on with the other animals, that are not destroying the place, that are not barking a lot. We don't like a lot of noise uh, unless they're doing it out of like security for the place. And they are very good security. If anybody comes close at night time, they're on it. So they're, they're, they're like um, an alarm system, you know, an, an anti-burglary system. So um, yeah, we're selective over the dogs that we have on site. Cats are usually all right, apart from, as you're gonna see in an upcoming vlog, the cats did a lot of expensive damage to the hot tub. So with the nails, and it's my bad because I, I should have protected it better. Uh, but this time around, we're gonna protect it much better. มีปูด้วยมีปูด้วยค่ะจะกินปูด้วยเหรอซ้ำๆซ้ำๆกินได้ครับมีหอยมีหอยใครเก่งมั้งครับโอ๊ยกระจมปะ What are you having for breakfast, Tiss? Happy Wednesday. We're going to the shop, aren't we? To get some more stuff for the cottage. Yeah, I don't see one from Pocky too. <laughs> you want what? Pocky? Yeah. <laughs> Pocky are those chocolate things, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. You're having breakfast then, or what? Uh, I can always... Why are you not? Where's your breakfast? Damo made some breakfast for Tiss and I thought she made some breakfast for me and I ate it but it was for it was for you wasn't it? Because you never have breakfast in the morning and then I make it for Tiss and myself and you eat them all. So this is going to be the final material shop we think other than the windows coming in it's the final materials there may be another decoration shop. That colour? Red, actually, it's all a dip colour now. Oh really? The red colour? Yeah. Is that for the cottage? No. What, what colour do we like for the cottage, do you think? For the sow at the cottage? Which one do you like? Yellow. Yellow? Oh, that'd look nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. Alright, then we'll get a bit of that then, yeah? And try it out. So now we're just trying to find the right paint for the wood. It's always a little bit difficult because it never comes out how you expect it to, so it's better to buy lots of small little cans first and test it out and then you've got to you got to kind of like shave it all off then and test another one and shave it all off like it. It's a bit of a trial and error process. They do have like examples like this for you, but you, it depends what which wood you're applying it to, to how it's going to, how the final finish is going to look. So you have to do a bit of trial and error. Do you think that sofa would look nice in the cottage or not? No. no. <laughs> it's quite funny, one of the guys that works here, he just stopped me and Tiss and said, can we have a photo? I watch your YouTube channel. I said it in Thai and I said, Kunfangrurang mate, like, do you understand the language? He said, no, he don't understand what we're talking about, but he watches it anyway. Uh, funny isn't it? Many Thai people watch our channel and they, they don't speak English. I think they just like to watch the kids. Um, when Damo makes her channel, Damo, Damo's going to be doing a channel. I'll put a link in the description and in the pinned comment where you can go and subscribe to it. Uh, whatever it's called now, it's not going to be called in the future, but uh, that, that channel will be in Thai. Um, it'll either be silent or in Thai. So something to uh, look forward to in the future. Damo's gonna do her own thing. Obviously when she's not pregnant, uh, she can't 
shoot a YouTube channel and be pregnant at the same time, but you can subscribe over there. I'll put a link below. So this here behind me is the rebar that they usually put on the floor uh, when you concrete a, a floor. And I have been thinking about when we build the animal enclosures to save money, we need like a metal cage all around it. And it's expensive to buy metal sheets. Each piece can be like five to 700 baht. Whereas one piece of the giant roll of this, that can, that's like 5,000 baht and that's gonna do the whole thing. Um, I'm not sure if it's suited to outdoor weather. I don't know if it's gonna rust or to, you know, it might maybe problematic, I'm not sure. But I do a little bit more research and I think it could be used for the animal enclosure cage. Right, what did you wanna say? Dad wanted to be dangerous. Oh, it's danger around here, isn't it? Yeah. Why? Got and you could fall over and you could cut yourself or bang your head, couldn't you? Yeah. Tis was sad then because you wanted to speak on camera, didn't you? Yeah. You wanted to say what you wanted to say? Yeah. Is there anything else you want to say? No. No? Yeah. Are you having fun? Yeah. Uh, so we, we just tried the colour and we're quite happy with it. So I love it when this tree blossoms on my bamboo. It's just crawling up and around. In a couple of years, this will take over the whole side of that bamboo. It does hide snakes, but inside my bamboo, there is a mosquito net, a net that I climb into at nighttime. So it kind of protects, it's like an inner layer that protects. There's probably a couple of snakes hiding in the roof because I found snake skins there before. Sometimes there's snake skins dangling down where they climb in under the, under here. But inside you have the protective mosquito net. So protects protects you while you're in bed. And uh, no snakes can get through this. I know a few people since we started this channel have gone living in bamboo huts. Uh, congratulations on your nice freestyle easy life. And it's just a cheap way to live. I've lived, I've slept in the bamboo hut now for nearly two years. And even though this cottage is being built, I'm going to stay in the bamboo hut. I love the bamboo hut. So as some note, we use um, recycle, well, reusable bottles here for our water to limit the plastic production. We're having a big problem with plastic all the time. Uh, but that's too heavy for Tiss. So what did I get you, Tiss? Wow. Little ones. Here, hold that, see if you can hold it. Okay. Is that better? Yeah. Now you can pick it up and you can drink it yourself, can't you? Yeah, can I you can. Keep trying. Just push that out there. Hey! Can you drink out of that then? Oh! Thank you. That one's for Tiss from IKEA. Bought on, you guessed it, Lazada. Something I wanted to share with you all as well is you may notice that our vlog. Um, we're not really presenting, we're not trying to show anything other than what it is. Uh, we're just vlogging our day-to-day -day life. And what I was thinking about is, of course you're going to get less subscribers, your content's not going to go as far. You know, there's no show here, we're just kind of vlogging our life. But the good thing about vlogging your life is, if you present and you have to be a character that everybody likes and everybody loves and you've got to be exciting and entertaining or you dress your life up in a way that it isn't really, then you have to keep doing that and doing that and doing that because that's your YouTube channel. You're going to have to keep upping your game and doing crazier stuff and being a character and there's a lot of ego involved in it. You know, YouTube, that's why they call it YouTube, you and Facebook, face. These are all e ego things, right? And I'm just trying to cut the ego out of well, cut the damage that the ego can do out of uh, YouTubing. And so we're just kind of capturing our real life. Uh, and that way we don't then have to pretend to be something we're not and then have to keep up with that pretending to be something you're not. Of course your channel grows less. Some people are into that. Some people are into just following somebody's authentic life. Um, other people want to be entertained or they want to believe that, uh, you know, these people are off living these amazing, exciting, wonderful lives yet if you were to look under the hood, there's problems there, you know? 
because everybody's life has problems. Our life has problems, our life is not perfect. Uh, we have health issues, the psychological issues, there's, there's times where you're feeling depressed, times when you're feeling like worried, stressed, like is it going to work out? I mean, uh, more so on the farm, like 90% of the time it's great, but when we are in Bali and when we were like working to build this cottage, that was really hard and I, I went into a deep depression then actually. But uh, I mean, it's better if you are going to do YouTube yourself as well. Just share your authentic self. Don't try and be something that you're not, because you'll never be able to live up to that. Uh, just share the good, the bad, the real, and uh, who, whoever resonates with that will stick around. Whoever doesn't resonate with it won't. It doesn't. It doesn't matter. Like uh, we'd rather build our channel based on what we do genuinely day to day, uh, not um, overly kind of like sensationalize our life. I ain't got no money. First week of the month, right up into orbit. My chicks, the all about. My landlord thinks a problem. A brand be no do. A possible solution. I haven't got a clue. But at the end of the day, at the end. So that matters, all I pray Just to feel good at the end of the day I've loaned on my possessions 